Hello Eagle fans, I'm Ernie Harris with the Herald News. I'm standing on the field, Bill Horton Field, Eagle Stadium. You'll look over my left shoulder, that's the old home side that was started in 1974 when the school opened. Ray County High School opened in 74 for 15 seasons. That's where it remained until the new side was built and opened in 1988. This field has seen a lot of good football and a lot of history has been made on this field, including the 1981 football season, where the Golden Eagles that year went to the state championship. They finished 12 and two that year, pitched seven shutouts along their route to Nashville. The 1981 team was a team of 40 plus players that were determined, 40 plus players that were not really predicted to be there. They were actually predicted to be five and five or six and four. But that season was magical. The whole community gathered around them, decorated businesses, had public pep rallies, bonfires, you name it. Those committee members sat down and shared some of their stories from that magical season. My name is Brock Harris. I was a junior in 1981 and I played outside linebacker in war number 32. I was Jeff Free. Uh, I was a senior that year. My uh, jersey number was number 43 and I was winning that. Doug Keelan, I was a junior that year, number 44, and played defensive back. Don Messerman, senior that year. I was the inside linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> number 68. 68. <laughs> My name is Todd Jackson. I was a sophomore that year. My number was number 72. Uh, played tackle both offense and defense. David Talent, senior that year, wore number 13 and played quarterback. What it meant back in 1981 was unity. It brought the south end of the county, Dayton and Spring City, and it combined us because as a freshman, we didn't like each other, but as a senior, we loved each other. So, and it brought unity and love. Being the question about the playoffs particularly, uh, I guess the measuring stick was Baylor because of Coach Red Edder down there and the dominance that they had. And in those days, we played private schools as well as you know, all AAA schools were large schools. So. Being 12 years into that cycle of the playoffs, we played the best of the best, and uh, it means a lot today because of the way they divided it up. I think at the time we were uh, playing for Ray County, we probably did not understand the, the gravity and the scope of what we had accomplished uh, over time. Uh, the fact that we made it to the state uh, championship game has um, meant more uh, than perhaps it did at the time and it also uh, on the negative side makes you feel more like we could have done more to maybe have won. I still wake up <laughs> throwing that pass that didn't make it to the sideline like it was supposed to. <laughs> I remember Guthrie was just a little bit slow and, and yeah yeah and, and got caught. It. yeah there's just a lot there was two or three plays just here or there just an extra step but you got to hand it to Overton they they made the plays enough to win anybody ever remember the play we were supposed to use if we got the pinch yes and what it's called doopsie do whoopsie doopsie doodle, doodle. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it we should have tried it right before <laughs> act just yeah doopsie doodle yeah I don't think we ever read it. We practiced it. The first time we practiced it, it, it was a pitch to Jamie. Jamie flips it back to James. And James flips it to me. And Scotty King's running the post down there just as far as he could go. And I threw it as far as I could throw it. He caught it. Coach Horton said, let's end on that. <laughs> one another as 
seventh and eighth graders. And we really had good success in, in all these teams here. And you know, you, you, you think back about it and you say, you know, we're going to have a good team whenever we get to the high school. That particular team, those seniors, had never lost uh, more than one or two games in a season their entire lives. They were winners at every level. In eighth grade, we beat each other. That's the only teams we lost to. <laughs> Six to nothing and 12 to nothing. That's <laughs> right. Good memories. That wasn't the case at city school. <laughs> <laughs> they were up and coming. We, we, uh, we, uh, that was definitely not the case. We were on the other end of that, mostly 35 to nothing. and. We, we had four losses on our schedule in middle school before we ever started, so uh, it was tough, but uh, a lot of those guys that stayed with that process, like Jamie and Panky and, and Barry Wilkerson and those guys that came through those, Phil Panky, uh, they had seen the rough side and it was fun to be on the good side with all those guys. But uh, for me personally, I know I came back, I didn't play my freshman year, came out my sophomore year because that team, was scheduled to be the better team of the two and uh, had a lot of returning seniors that year and, and uh, we spent a lot of time playing JV games together uh, as a group and that's where a lot of the, the year before um, scout team and, and uh, JV game you went through it every day against a really good team the year before and, and, and the years ahead of that when you talk about Charles Gillespie and, and uh, Alonzo Banks and Tracy Houston, uh, Houston and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Freddie Holloway and Tim Guerin, we stood on those shoulders, Barry Shavers and, and guys that laid that foundation for us as kids watching how Ray County football was supposed to be played and, uh, and to carry that on to the next level. And back then you only got one shot to get in. Yeah, and, uh, right. it was only one playoff yeah. so, from, from the district. For the district. Yeah. Yeah. Had it been like today's, we would have made it three straight years right. soon. It would have been nice. So. Hey. I don't know that we thought at the end of the year that we would still be playing in December. We wanted to be in the hunt for the district. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think it was Coach Amatry come out and said, just think, boys, y'all going to be eating turkey dinner and coming out here and practicing. And I thought, ooh. I don't want to do that, you know. But it turned out to be reality, you know, and they just told us things and we just believed them. And we never wanted to go through that post gallop and week practice. Oh, no. <laughs> no. That wasn't good, yeah, I agree. That was. The thing I remember most than anything is the change in onside kicks, onside kick team, everything was covered in detail, scouting reports. Oh, yeah. Uh, you knew what they were going to do. You were prepared, and, and we knew what we were going to do, just like the Dipsy Doodle and all those things. Uh, but the preparedness, kicking game. We had never prepared like that. Goal line, special situations, everything was covered before we got to a game. And, and uh, we felt like we could be prepared for anything. And, and practices were tough. <laughs> practices were we're tough. If you can get through practice and get to the game, it was a good week. Yeah, it was a great week. Yeah. You did somebody else. <laughs>
played them. And they beat both Farragut and Ray County who were the semifinals for the East. So they were and they didn't make the playoffs. And they didn't make the playoffs. Mount Julie did or something. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they lost they lost in an upset to Springfield, I think it was, the week after they uh, they blew us out. And as a result, they did not make the playoffs. But they came to see us play yeah. in more than one in more game. than one playoff yeah. game. A bunch of them showed up for the Ferry game because they knew they'd beat both of us. <laughs> I remember my dad talking to some people from Gallatin, and he said, "But they told him that's not the same football team that we beat 38 to six." No. No. The no. best way when they made a big change of defense when they Steve off the tackle, quarterback, <laughs> linebacker. Yeah, I'm sure. Absolutely. They were willing to admit they were. They had made changes, yeah, adjustments, yeah. and they had changed back. The word that you know, he Well, I'm going to say this too. So, the first ball game Steve Douglas went back to Loudmaker, you know who won his spot. <laughs> okay? Thank God. But no, wait a minute. The other team had prepared to block him. <laughs> and it wasn't him, it was me. So, but I want to go back to Gallatin a second. We played Gallatin three times in my career in the regular season. and. Uh, they played one more time. They had two two-game series. And uh, Coach Flatt told Bill Horton, he said, we're done after next year. We will not play you all in the regular season anymore. And we never beat them, okay? But the physicality of the games had gotten so much that Coach Flatt said, it's not worth it. We don't want to do this in play next season. The thing that I remember, too, the T-shirts that he got, beware. Mm -hmm. You know, so that kind of, that word, beware of the claw, beware. You know, right. people don't know and you're fixing the show, they need to be wary of what you're fixing to do. And that mindset, like like Donnie said, setting that mindset of, they need to be aware of us, you know, we, we, we kind of carried that a little bit too, so. Fair, that's rain and Fun state semis, last one I had with these guys is you know, it's pretty memorable. Yeah. For me it was Franklin County because I got thrown out there. We're up ten nothing. I get thrown out for Jack Barry gets hurt, Jughead gets hurt with a shoulder on an interception. Now I'm back there and they're throwing it. And Tim Hammetry looks at me and says, Do not get the <laughs> <laughs> But here's what you'll here's what I remember, and this is what it was all about. Steve Douglas said he'll he'll do it. He'll take care of it. We got him. He's got us. It's all I mean. It's I wasn't gonna let him down, <laughs> and he wasn't gonna let us let each other down. So the, the, the Franklin County game was that's a tough ball game. Yeah, it, it, it <laughs> was. was but it's hard to beat the Bears. During the playoffs, it was it was. It was probably the easiest of the three that we played, I felt like, in the playoffs. We dominated it. More yes, we dominated the game. Scrimmage, sure. Yes, very much so up front. We, we did. But, My tackles uh, fiend it up where I could look good. The, the, Baylor, the Baylor game, we were down. That was the third game we played them, though, and they had our signals, is what I was told, yes. because. Brookshire broke a long run. They were ahead seven nothing forever, and all they had to do was stall the clock. And Brookshire would watch Coach Hamtree and call the signal, and then he'd call his play. And Coach Hamtree started doing this, <laughs> one of those, and he got a delay a game, which threw them out into a long third down. So we had advantage. They had to punt, and that's when Charlie took it all the way to the house. Five nil. That was. Yeah, it was a change. Otherwise, we were we were we couldn't move the ball with them because they knew exactly what we were doing when we were doing it. It was, it was a stall. The memorable part of that after that watching that film back and seeing Steve go in front of the Baylor fans <laughs> <laughs> and Charles going that way and Steve's going that way and uh, he's jumping up. Now I think he did it the next week at Franklin County. I think so he did too. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, he was he played a tremendous amount of passion and, and carried that. He was he was the 
bell cow. He was the man. He was the man. Him and him and I know him and Donnie and I'm sure Brock standing out there in the huddle. Of, Where's the signal, coach? Where's the signal? Because they were ready to line up and they couldn't get. And then finally it just played out that that caused them to delay, delay, delay a game yes. enough to make them out of their short down that they were working with. When you talk about coaches and then too, we talked about this I think earlier today, but Steve uh, Amatry is still coaching and Dennis Thrill is still coaching. And you're talking about 40 years later mm -hmm. and uh, passion. And they're still in the game and that's unheard of. Yes. You know, and we lost Bill at a young age really. And I had the privilege of coaching with him my first year in education 30 years ago. He was uh, the head coach and he got sick. So knowing what I knew as a player, didn't get to quite experience it as a coach and fellow colleague, but uh, but he was, uh, be interested to see, we talked about it, will he still be coaching today? <laughs> talk about that. Probably. <laughs> I, I think it helped, but I, I don't. I don't think it, it was all of it. I think it had to do with those coaches as much as anything. Bring brought us closer together because it didn't matter if we were related or not. I wasn't related to anybody else on the team, but it didn't matter. You always felt like somebody, because I had a brother. I always felt like somebody had my back, you know. And then you having one person have your back, and then you turn into having forty three have your back. And that's that's a pretty comforting feeling, and that's what it felt like on a Friday night when you're going out. It was it was battle, you know. It's, you're going to battle. I, I think that I think uh, I didn't have any cousins or brothers playing, but Jeff and I are we're part of a Dupont family. And how many of those guys that drove to Dupont and when they went to Dupont and Chattanooga and wore Ray County stuff? How important was that? And uh, and the community had you back. And, and you were representing them, and it changed. They've been eating humble pie from the red They walked in there, and Jeff and I, I've told stories about that. Our dads worked down there, and a lot of guys, Donnie Blacker's dad worked down there, right. too. So uh, that, that DuPont family raised a lot of our community, and we were embedded in Chattanooga. So that was a, another dynamic that uh, was interesting from my viewpoint. I think it was the beginning of eagle pride, maybe, in, 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 in a sense, that we brought it to the top. Now, now, just like in a family, though, you always have, you know, brotherly love that doesn't always, but it challenged you. And I, was, I want to tell this one story. It's, it's the Farragut game, mm -hmm. and we started throwing the ball a lot because it was raining. And uh, broke the huddle, completed pass, and... Al's walking beside me as we huddle back up, and I said, man, we're throwing the ball a lot tonight. And he said, yeah, and you're completing them, too. <laughs> so, there was always, you know, you had to do your best for your family, you know, because they could talk to you like that and, and still motivate you. Hard work. Tenacity. I think that uh, if you're an athlete, you learn that temporary failure does not mean total defeat. And you learn how to get up, dust yourself off, figure out what you did wrong, and, and go at it again. And so I think that from a lifetime standpoint, uh, the lessons learned on the football field are exactly that. Um, may not things may not go perfect for you, but that's not the end of the world. You got to do your uh, post-game analysis and figure out a, a plan to do better the next time and I think that all started at Rick County High School. That's it. I think the thing I've took with it forever and have used it every day is making sure the kids know you love them, people know you love them, your teammates know you love them. And we were told that in, in practice and in games and in huddles and that word was very powerful and it still is. But it wasn't just the word, it was the action and the sacrifice and commitment and showing up every day. I don't think people miss practice. You didn't miss practice, you showed up to practice. Jeff, do you remember the ride home with Scott after the first meeting with Horton? <laughs>
That was one of the things that we couldn't. Well, I don't know about this love thing. <laughs> we he taught us, but it it was a different thought process for us at that point because we still hadn't jailed and right. and, and we'd been talked down to and talked up to and everything else around through years balls, you know. Yeah. And but when he came in and met with us, now we're going to love each other. That was the one thing we talked about on the way home on a ride home. So, he sounds good. I just don't know about this love thing. <laughs> Wasn't that the first sentence he said? Yeah. Me and I love you. Yeah. I think that's what, how he started off that first meeting. Yeah. Then he brought ham and tree along with the kind of scare us <laughs> Six foot three. But this, this group of guys, and that's what, you know, Jim Jackson and Hugh and Drake for Andy Morris, you had great middle school coaches that were cared about their programs and taught the basics and fundamentals and taught us how to do it regardless of something, you know, winning or losing. You show up and you do your best and, and that, that translated and that process was, it was a, that there's always a process that goes back and those guys, like I say, you stand on the shoulders of people before you and uh, that was, that's still true today. And on that note, um, I think one of the biggest things that Hewlett Draper instilled in people was discipline and uh, I'm, I have a story, I won't tell you the whole story, I'll just say that I got in trouble, uh, but Coach Draper held us accountable and that was um, at a time when sports, uh, you know, athletes could get away with things uh, like just like now, but I still remember him over there at RC3 now, every time I go in there and work out, I remember the night he said to me, I've benched hot dog players before and I'm not too old to do it again. <laughs> Who'd he bench with you, Rob? Oh, some guy named Messimer. <laughs> we, we, we were talking about the love thing, though, how, it, how far it had come. Uh, I scored on a quarterback sneak, you know, give it to Jamie until we, or Charlie or somebody until we get to the goal line, and then I got to score the touchdown. And uh, Dale Harris and I were laying in the pile, face guard to face guard. And I said, Jocko, is that you? And he said, yep, Golden Boy or something. You know, that's my nickname at that time. And, and I said, I love you. He said, I love you. I don't know about these guys, but it put a smile on my face. I mean, you know, it's, it's a pride factor. You know? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, you know, greatest feeling in the world when you're 17 and you've got the county behind you, you know, so. Absolutely. What one? Titles on the newspaper. Don't go to Ray County. It's closed. Yeah. And, yeah, we, we had, closed down the shops and left. Like, well, I mean, it wasn't unusual for the businesses. They closed on Friday when we were on the road. The oh, courthouse would even close. Well, they, they treated us like the royalty, board. though, because we ate dinners and things all the time as a team that we never had that before. With this team, anytime they get together, it's always a good time because we've <clears throat> we've always been genuine with each other, yeah. and to me, that's it's always good. We've lost some guys that uh, yeah, some at a young age and some here in the last several years, but uh, uh, that's those are hard days when we lose lose a, a team member. Looking forward to seeing some of the guys just where they've been and gone. There's several names that I haven't kept up with other scene. I don't do Facebook so I can't keep up with all of them, but uh, looking forward to you just getting together and seeing them being together. I'm glad I got to be a part of it. Uh, look back at it and you know we we had a successful bunch. We did. We we had good guys, but I was glad I got to be a part of it. And I I look back at some of the old things that Coach Orton, I mean, the little things that you thought back on he did. Uh, I remember one, of the, one game we played, uh, I think it was Hickson. We won three to nothing. Three to nothing. Nobody yeah. thinks about that. A terrible game. <laughs> For me. The worst game we ever played. Yeah. yeah. We won three to nothing. <clears throat> so I, I'm running out on the field. 
During the huddle, Coach Ward soon being in the play. I tapped Scotty King to go in, and he calls another play. Well, it was a, 40, a 646 instead of a 46. I blocked for a 46, and the 646 <laughs> was, I go out for a pass. Whenever I came off, I didn't know that two people could fit in that helmet. Because <laughs> he put my helmet down, and he was in the helmet. And I, I, I looked back at, you know, he's trying to, you know, he, he's getting your attention for something. You know, you got to pay attention, but a little thing. But I think back, I'm, I'm glad I had it. Lots of little stuff like that. Well, it was a special year, and I think some of us that were younger thought we'd be back. Again and again. And we found out that it wasn't that easy when we found that out. But uh, I think we expected we'd be back. And that didn't happen. That, that was, that made that year even more special. Just remember, they gave a runner up trophy. and. Coach Horton and I, he, he, he picked me out of everyone on the field. He said, come here, Mr. Murray. I was like, I, you know, I'm tore up. We lost three to nothing. It's my senior year. And I was like, Coach, he says, you take this. And he gives me the trophy to carry off. And I'm like, it's Coach. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, when he did something, he always had an ulterior motive to most things he done. And to me, it was, I think it was, it was like, here, you know, you're still a champion in, in this version, in champion. So I've always thought about it like that. Well, I had played college with two of the guys that played on the Overton team, including the kicker. Yeah. Okay, so that was not a lot of fun in my respect. He was a good guy. Though. He was. I, was. I had a lot of classes with him. He, he was a good fellow. Interesting story on that Overton. Phil Pankey's son played at Overton High School, finished up his high school career over there, and I went and watched him play. And uh, they still recognize, he said it before every home game, the 1981 state champions Overton High School. So uh, there's a lot, and I think some other guys have had some ties with guys in Overton. Danny Johnson was beside our right. couple. Well, he was telling so me. It's, so. it's, it's, uh, to, to put that season in perspective, though, no national team since Overton has gone undefeated. None. So they were the last team to do that, and we still uh, have the state record, or at least tied for the state record, for the lowest scoring game in the history of state championships. It's hard to get much lower. <laughs> <laughs> I, believe, I believe if we, because it was a home and home championship then, and they just happened to put it at Vanderbilt, right. if we'd have played them in Ray County, we'd have been 14, 21, nothing, something like that. They would have never scored, and we'd have scored at least one or two touchdowns. <laughs> I do believe that. Well, we, uh, we were talking, I remember that night after the Ferry game, we were talking about, we, we might go to Memphis. We were talking about, we might oh, go yeah. to Memphis or, or Nashville. Or Nashville. Yeah. I'd love to be able to talk to him now to see what, what did that do to him to yeah. give me that liberty to do that? Because I didn't do that every day, and didn't do it every game, but that one time, it worked perfect. <laughs> 300, 300, 300, 305, and it's still, I think, a record. I was, I, you know, his jersey got ripped, so it gets ripped off. Yeah, he's 44 for a while. And I, and I turn around, I'm standing close to Horton, he said, take your jersey off. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I had a great second half. <laughs> so, Keelan, for 230 was, yards. I'm always proud. <laughs> uh, but I would love to have that conversation with him someday. Yeah. I think I will.